Hey folks, and welcome to my thoughts on a comic. And today's comic is Fallen Angels Runaway, issue 1 out of 8 by Marvel. This is a uh, limited series, apparently. Now, there is some uh, violence and knives in this one, so if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Also, spoilers. Alright, let's start with the butchering of names. Alright, so this was uh, created by Duffy and Gam Gamil. I probably botched that. Alright, so the writer is Joe Duffy. Uh, the penciler is uh, Carrie. Carrie? Carrie G Gamil. Gamil. Uh, probably botched that. Uh, finisher is Tom Plammer. Letter is Jim Novak. Novak. I think I've heard of him. Uh, colorist is uh, Petras Scotties. Ugh. Sure that one. Editor is Anne. No, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. That'll be down below. And editor in chief is Jim Shooter. That was the word I couldn't read in that uh, Spider-Man comics. I think it was Chief. Uh, anyway, all these will be uh, as usual down below. Well, also, this has that um, uh, Black Spider-Man... Uh, Black Spider-Man. It has that Spider-Man in the Venom suit uh, thingy here. I don't remember what it means, but I know it means something. If someone can please remind me down below, I will appreciate that. Oh, this came out uh, near the 90s. From what I've read in um, 1987. Cool. Alright, so in our series, we, in this, in our series, in this comic, we have uh, the new mutants. We have sort of uh, like the I don't know, next generation or the new mutants to us. They've been through some stuff or some kind of shit prior to this, and now they're all in the Xavier's uh, Institute for. Uh, school. Professor Xavier's Institute for Gifted uh, Children. Uh, for Gifted Children. Uh, now, now these probably had a series prior to this one, so I, I don't know what happened before that. Because this is also something uh, limited. Anyway, so, so we have our, uh, our new kids. We have uh, Robert, we have Sam. Uh, that Warlock is here! Holy shit, he looks so different from the comic I had. And we have these other ones that I um, don't really remember the names of much. But this girl's a wolf. She's also ginger. So anyway, we have this uh, new group of mutants. They're uh, now at Professor Xavier's Institute to learn how to control their powers. Uh, Robert, or Bobby, is our uh, main character here. Also, Professor Xavier is for some reason absent. I thought at first that he at four, first I can't English that he was dead, but um, doesn't seem like he's dead. But he's for some other or other reason he's absent, and he left Magneto, who's now doesn't want to kill humans or is not bad a bad guy anymore and this one, or maybe for a time period. Anyway, he, he leaves them now in charge. He's the new headmaster, principal, whatever position Professor Xavier had. He's now filling it. Uh, Professor Xavier has asked him. And I gotta say, Magneto looks good in a suit. Really good. So now, now that's, uh, that's what he's currently doing. So we start our story with the kids uh, playing uh, soccer. Bobby tells us a bit about himself. He's from, um, I think it was Colombia. He's 14. He's now here. This is his new family. Uh, we see a warlock who apparently c comes from a race of aliens who kill everything, but he was born different. He doesn't want to kill things. Yay! Well, whatever. <laughs> He's so adorable in here. I mean, he was really cool looking at the other comic. He's just so cute here. Look at that face! I realized who it is. So anyway, the kids are playing uh, soccer. 
Bobby and uh, Sam right here are um, are the closest friends among all this uh, group. They go way back when uh, apparently Bobby was a member of the Hellfire Club, which killed uh, Bobby's girlfriend then. Some, some deep shit in here. Also, why did he have a girlfriend? He's like 14. Hmm, okay, anyway. They, they are, they are playing, everything is uh, great, um, Ginger Wolf Girl and Warlock are sitting on the side, enjoying the quiet, and all that, and then, um, Sam is about to go and score a goal in Bobby's, uh, I don't know what's the word, I forgot the word in English for, uh, where you shoot the soccer ball thing, and, uh, Bobby uh, manages to prevent that, but... They both slam really hard into each other, and um, Bobby panics and, active and accidentally activates his powers and throws Sam into a tree. Uh, he's kind of like he has the solar power, I mean, if you look here. He becomes very powerful, basically. And now, uh, Bobby is horrified as soon as he realizes what he's done. And he asks all the others who run to Sam to to make sure, to, to see how he is. And then all of them, except I would say for Warlock, who's uh, mostly adorably confused, uh, seem to think that he wanted to hurt him and ask him if he's disappointed that his friend is not dead. Basically, they're a bunch of fucking cunts. Is what I'm trying to say. Bobby is obviously very upset. He didn't mean to hurt his friend whatsoever. And, you know, okay, look, I, I get it. Sometimes you need stupid stuff to happen to move a plot. What I want to ask is this. I'm no expert in soccer, but I do assume that you need to constantly be focused on everything. All the players, right? This happened right next to the um, thing where you shoot the, the soccer ball. They must, they were supposed to all be looking at them, because they were participating in the game. Fair enough, maybe Warlock and Ginger Wolf Girl didn't notice. Okay, fa they were a bit far away. But all these assholes were supposed to, to see that. And you can clearly see it's an accident. They really bump hard into each other. So what's with the, the accusations? You're not happy you didn't murder him? Are you fucking stupid? I don't know, maybe there's some bad history between the rest of them. So much for friends, eh? Like, you think they at least give them the benefit of the doubt? Like, I would understand if Bobby and Sam were playing by themselves. You know, playing something by themselves, and this happened, and then they all ran. They, they, they heard the racket, and all of them, like, ran towards the spot. And they saw that, you know, Bobby was, uh, Sam was on the ground and Bobby's standing his powers activate. Okay, you'll jump to assumptions. But in here, these dumb, dumb asses were supposed to see it happening. So what gives? Do they become momentarily stupid? I don't know. Anyway, Magneto, um, but before this happens in his office... He uh, wants to call this doctor lady who's currently on an island and experimenting on some uh, some things. She has this woman who has kind of similar black canary powers. She screams really loudly and she can fly. And this bloke who can make uh, duplicates of himself. I don't know if he's a mutant or it's the suit he's wearing because he doesn't seem to be taking it off. Although, funnily enough, he went out, he sent one of his duplicates, and he wore a coat. Yeah, buddy, that's gonna, that's gonna mask that uh, suit. So, um, he wants to call her to help him. He's not really good with all this uh, paperwork and report cards and shit. So he calls her, and she says, yes, I will uh, love to come. Just say the word, and I'll arrive to help you. All right, we go back to the, the whole scene. Professor, uh, Professor Magneto takes uh, Sam. He says, okay, we're going to the hospital. Bobby goes back into the house and the mansion. Uh, Bobby, uh, Sam, Sam wakes up and asks if, they, if Bobby's okay and if they won the game, if he got the goal. And then they all go to the hospital. In the meantime, Bobby looks at a photo album. 
we find out that he, um, once he had quite the happy family, but then his parents divorced. His dad is now a member of the Hellfire Club. And seems to be more interested in making money than in Bobby. His mom is a talented archaeologist, but also seemed to be more interested in that than her son. But he's like, well, now I have a new family, but oh no, I, I screwed up. Okay, g granted, he, he could have heard Sam, but again, wasn't that intentional. It's not like he wanted to. So anyway, he goes, he wants to talk to Magneto about what happened. Sees that no one is there. And then he sees a report about him. And he reads and figures from that that Professor Xavier has thought the same about him. That, you know, he might uh, go to the same path that his dad did. And how uh, Sam is a good influence on him. So he decides that he shall leave. Meantime, we're in this hospital. Uh, they x-ray Sam. He's okay. He's just got a slight concussion. Concussion? Yeah, concussion. He'll be fine in a few days. So uh, Magneto goes with the doctor to sign some papers. And then all the kids say, yeah, well, Bobby, uh, you know, Bobby hurt you. It was intentional. He says, no. You know, if anything, I almost, I think I almost broke his neck when I bumped into him like that. Anyway, they get back home. Uh, he tells him, you know, Bobby is uh, it's not bad. They go back home. Lights are all out. Where is Bobby? Ginger Wolf Girl turns on the lights and finds his uh, note. Uh, Magneto reads it to them and all the other uh, assholes, except maybe Ginger Girl and Warlock. And of course, Sam uh, feel like assholes, as they were, naturally. Assholes. That Bobby has left uh, because of them, because he hurt Sam. So then Magneto tells them, Go to your rooms and think about what you've done. You tell them, Magneto. So they all go, they, they all, uh, you know, they feel bad. Right at it. And, and you know, two, two of those are really like bitches in that moment. Uh, before. They all go to their room, Sam, uh, and again, Sam tells them, you know, I've been a part of the Hellfire Club. It's the same people who killed Bobby's girlfriend, and he forgave me for that. So, uh, Magneto's out to go look for him. Warlock, again, is adorably confused and decides, I must find uh, Bobby, so everything will be in harmony again. It's just so adorable. Uh, adorably confused. So he turns into an airplane and just flies out. He's like, okay, where do people go to ponder? Manhattan! I will go to Manhattan. He's, he, he needs his own uh, cartoon in, in this era and form. He needs one. Alright, so he, he just goes up on the sky. Then we uh, move to Bobby. He's, uh, I don't know if he's in Manhattan, but he's in the city. Says, you know, he slept on a bench and... Um, was woken up by a uh, weird dude. And Bobby cursed him away and he's like, how can I, uh, De Costa, I, I think that's, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his surname accurately. You know, how, how could I have gone such a thing? You know, he doesn't want to steal. So anyway, he walks and we see a, um, a pretty sure, Asian girl, a young Asian girl who was approached by a, a young boy who wants to sell her a, um, Calendar with Oriental beauties. He, he thinks she's a boy. Um, yeah, she she's dressed like a tomboy more. So she rips uh, the calendar, and uh, then she rips the other calendars and takes his money. Before she tells him, you know, your family makes you come out here. You're with this church who apparently promised her family that they'll make them legal and give them jobs. But then they just made them their uh, slaves and made them work for them. So uh, she ran away. I wonder, does it tell you her name? I, I don't think they do. So, uh, she, she, you know, counts the money and walks on the street. Very stupid, you should have put that in your pocket. Then two assholes notice her with the money and said, Come on, sweetheart, we'll take it off of you. So she kicks both of them and wants to run into an alley, but oops, dead end. She's like, no, no, you know, I was just joking. Here, take the money. But then Bobby comes to her rescue. He starts to use his powers, you know, and it kicks them around a bit, but then for some reason his powers fail him, 
And now both he and the young Asian girl are, well, at least for now, fucked. Unless someone comes to their uh, rescue. That's where it ends. Alright, now uh, let's quickly go to the art before the conclusion. So I like the art, it was really cool. <laughs> I love the cover. We'll get Warlock. Although that is a bit portrayed dramatically, I mean, it's just in a soccer game. But uh, anyway, it's still cool. Alright, so there's Bobby and Sam. I'll uh, skip a few. There's Magneto. Look at him in that suit. That looks good. There's Charles. For some reason, here he's standing, so... Actually, I don't know how in, in his origins Charles have a wheelchair, to be honest. Alright, we got this commercial that, um... I haven't really read into deeply, but looks like someone was on drugs. Alright, there's, ah, there's the screaming lady, there's that other woman. I think she might be Scottish. So I move on. You see, he, like you see, they bump into each other and he panics. Like he has his, his elbow in his throat. That would make anyone a bit scared. They're not terrified, so he panics and uses his powers, but he didn't mean to hurt him. You overreacting dickheads. So you see, then they're like, oh no, he hurt him, poor Bobby. Well, we move on to the. Oh, that is a really cool facial expression. <laughs> look at that. I, I do like this art style. Oh, look at Warlock here. It's really cool. And so, how does he get a human shape, by the way? Alright, they read the note, and we skip to the end. There's the two assholes, Knife and uh, the girl. And Bobby. Will someone come to save him? Maybe Comet Man. Comet Man. He does seem to be flying in that direction. Alright. And that is the end of our uh, story. And this was uh, this was really good. Had a lot of uh, quite a lot of writing, but still, uh, I really enjoyed it. Good story. Characters are interesting. I'm dying to know more about Warlock. Oh, uh, he's, he's he's so cool.